Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Title Tuesdays. My name is Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO of Independence Title. And as you know, we are the preferred title company here in South Florida. And there's reasons why, because we bring continued added value. Today we have a special guest again. You know, we love to bring guests on our show. We have Claudia Pinchasau, who is one of our expert appraisers. And she's also a licensed realtor. And we're gonna talk a little bit later about how those two go in hand in hand. So welcome to the show Thank today. You. Thank you. So Claudia does a lot of closings with us and, and we wanted to bring her in because not only is she a licensed realtor, she also does uh, appraising of properties, which is very unique and, and there's always a lot of questions we get when it comes to appraisals, what is appraisals and, and the differences between what people see in the market. Mm -hmm. So let's start off basic, tell them a little bit about what, what is an appraisal of a property? Well, an appraisal is really an unbiased opinion of value and marketability. It's usually used for lending purposes to determine the collateral for the bank. That's basically what it is. Okay, so, so you're able to go into a house and, and pretty much understand what different aspects of the property are, are worth, whether it's an upgraded kitchen, uh, upgraded flooring, things like that. Correct. There's different aspects. The, the main thing is functionality, external external obsolescence or upgrades or over improvement or under improvement it really there are so many different factors that determine the value of a property but marketability as well as value is one of the key things that really put it all together now i see you know i go a lot hear a lot of speaking around town and, and people always say when you're talking about properties location 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 correct and i know one of the things we see and people get asked all the time well the house behind me or the house in the next uh, yeah. street over right. is selling for X, why is mine selling for, for less or for more? So right. talk a little bit how location plays a, a part in appraisal. Well, location is extremely important because as here in South Florida, we have intercoastal properties, oceanfront properties, or properties back to school or front to school. All of those factors determine the value or the marketability in the market. So it definitely makes a difference. One of the key things always is to look inside your subdivision. Not necessarily because the property is right next to you means that it's gonna sell for the same or less. It depends on a lot of different factors. But location, go on your subdivision. If you look at the folio number of the property in Broward County, the eighth pair of numbers is really your subdivision number. If there are no comparables there within your subdivision, you could go back into the this, this, the third pair, which is your section, that will give you a mile radius there for your property. That's really how appraisers determine the value of the neighborhood, and we go from there. We could go higher or lower, but it depends on what people are willing to pay for a property in that market, in that neighborhood. That's important, it's important. You know, I was looking up last night, uh, someone's house, you know, I was looking mm -hmm. on Zillow, which I know we don't like to use for right. appraised value, but just to get an idea, and then you see when Zillow gives the comparables, you're looking at some of these houses. And in this case, I knew the specific subdivision was a 55 and older community. And they were bringing up comparables the next street over that wasn't even part of this development. It just happens to be they were on that borderline. So Yes, I mean, age-restricted, gated communities. I mean, I live right next to a, a non-gated community, so definitely values are gonna be totally different. So always, always, always use subdivision will give you an average number the people, the buyers, are willing to pay for that specific neighborhood. So if you're above that, you know that you're overpriced. And you're below that, you know you're underpriced. So that's something that you start from there and you get an idea of what people are willing to pay in that specific neighborhood. It's awesome. And, and now this goes into a great topic because you know, in our business, we're always looking at the tax collector, the property appraiser right. site. And, and one of the questions people always ask is why does the property appraiser say my house is worth 200,000, but when I have an appraisal, it's actually worth more. And I know that the property appraiser has, uh, they don't come out and look at the inside of the house. They're not looking at, you know, they just go by square footage, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, if there's a pool, and they do an assessed value. As well as the assessed value, a lot of times if it's a homesteaded property, it's capped on assessed value increasing. So, so we know the assessed value, we, we cannot rely on it. We can't rely on that to be a market value of the property. They would need to give you a call so you can do some type of, of what we call, I guess it's a CMA. Well, the CMA, it's a little bit different. The CMA just gives you 
Again, all the sales in the neighborhood, it gives you the active pending backup sales, even expires listings. At an appraisal is really more, we look at each individual property and look at its features, its location, how, how many times have it sold, what is the tax bracket, if it's in a flat zone. There are so many different aspects of the subject property that we compare to. So it is totally different. That's why a lot of times we have an issue when the appraised value is not the same as the list price or the contract price. And that's where really the difference comes about. It's really concentrated on the features of the subject property and then compare it to the most similar property to that. Okay, so, and, and we have, our, our clients are a broad range, so we have mm -hmm. some lenders. Hopefully they'll be able to reach out to you right. and get you on their approved list to be Beautiful. able to do appraisals. Mm -hmm. Um, but most importantly, we have realtors out there, we have investors out there, and we get calls all the time. People are saying, hey, I need an appraisal. I need, I need to know what this house is worth. So what are you seeing some of your clients, aside from a lender, mm -hmm. that, that are looking for, and what are they calling you for? Well, uh, interesting. Definitely value is the main thing. People want to know how much they're buying for. Even if it's a cash purchase, they want to know what, what, what property they're buying. Just last week I had a phone call from a guy that was trying, has been trying to get an appraisal done on a property he's purchasing cash, but no appraiser is willing to do the appraisal because it's such a unique property and there is no market for that property. That, it's a single family house that sits on a condominium lot. Now market wise, it's not, it, it, people are not willing to pay top dollars for a property without any land value. So that specific property is unmarketable. So those are the type of things that we do as an, as an appraiser. We look at value and marketability. If you wanna know how much your house is worth or how much you wanna list it for, if the property is unique property and has a lot of upgrades, that's a great reason why to get an appraisal because you really don't know. It's not dollar per dollar on upgrades. That's really the main thing. And investors, they go and they, some of them use top quality products to get top dollars for the property, but a lot of times it's an over improvement and that really affects it adversely rather than positive to the property. So the investors, you need to be smart, don't over improve these yes. properties. Yes. And I remember years ago, because when I first got into the business, I was a, a mortgage broker mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I first started in this business. I remember I had a house, it was somewhere in Okeechobee or Loxahatchee, it was a round house. And I remember speaking to the appraiser and he says, I just have no way to really be able to tell you what this house is worth. It's kind of a guesstimate, you know, which is what it is because yes. your appraisal may be different than the other appraiser right. because you may see something that they didn't see or, yeah. or vice versa. Yeah, I mean, basically an appraisal is an opinion of value. And the more unique the property, the more different values you're gonna, you're gonna have because it depends on the focus of that specific appraiser. Some may, focus on marketability or value or location or size or lot size, especially in Luxahatchee like properties like that, it's more value on the land than in the house. So it, it really varies and it, it, ultimately it's an opinion of value. And it's even more important, you know, that's where we talked about the connection of being a realtor versus an appraiser and not just being an appraiser. You know, and it comes back to me where, where you know, I have a, license, a real estate license. I don't practice real estate, but I have a, a good understanding of a purchase contract of how to deal with buyers and sellers. So for you, I think it's fantastic to be a licensed realtor as well yes. because you can understand marketability. You can understand when, when you can look at the history of a property and probably see how long the average house is on the market mm -hmm. and have a better understanding than someone who just appraises property. So you're kind of that multifaceted. And not only that, I mean, it's, it, uh, being an appraiser really gives me the ability to not to see the future value, but we determine the market increase. We could see, we do analysis. An appraisal has a market condition analysis that it breaks the market in three different, four different aspects, really. Properties that are currently on the market, properties that have sold zero to three months, four to six months, and seven to 12 months. And we could track the increase in that neighborhood, which is really amazing. So the market could be stable in most places, but in this specific, because we do a subdivision specific, we could see the trend. So it's, it's really very uh, useful as a realtor because I could see when I'm gonna list a property, I could see the market trend increasing or decreasing and I could use those numbers, those are statistics to really present it to my, to my clients. It's important, I, I got a vision as you were speaking, thinking about almost like a diamond. 
-hmm. where you're able to hold up a diamond and look at yes. all the different all you know different sides aspects. of it and the different mm -hmm. aspects of it to, to really put a report together because yeah. it's not a science it's not like bedrooms worth this much this no. is worth this much it's really about you going out assessing the property Correct. saying this is what I feel it's worth Correct. I'm learning a lot today so I want to keep going I hope you have you know a couple extra minutes sure. I want to talk about Fannie Mae. We hear so many times Fannie Mae, how strict it is. Can you talk a little bit and, and tell them out there a little bit about the differences with Fannie Mae guidelines when it comes to appraisals? Sure. Very, very strict on their guidelines. Um, main thing for Fannie Mae is really location. You have to be within, they require one mile radius, but they often prefer just the neighborhood where your property is located. After that, they want properties that have sold within six months. If, it's, if we don't have properties that sold within six months, we could expand the, the date of sale, but typically the last six months is, is what they're looking for. As far as adjustments, line adjustments, it's only 10%, meaning if a property, ha it's, it's upgraded, if the subject property has been upgraded, and I'm comparing it to a property with standard features, I could only, up I, I could only adjust 10% of the sales price. So if the property sold for 100,000, my maximum line adjustment, $10,000. Wow. Regardless of what the upgrades are. So that's a very strict guideline. Then we have, um, and then once we finish all the adjustments for the differences, we could have net adjustment of 15% or gross adjustment, the total adjustments, 25%. And those cannot be exceeded. All right, so you know, Fannie yes. Mae's stricter, so you need to know if you're a realtor and you're gonna be selling to uh, a traditional FHA Fannie Mae type yes. buyer, you know, you need to know that appraisals can be an issue. And we've talked on other episodes with lenders where they talk about it. it's always that appraisal contingency that comes back. You're on eggshells until the appraisal is done. Yes. And the problem I've seen, and, and I hear a lot of investors talk about it, is that they'll meet the appraiser out there because the appraisal, the appraiser is bringing three comparables that aren't even really comparables. So the realtors need to be able to do their homework, especially Correct. these listing agents. You have this house listed. It's very important to meet the appraiser out at the property, Correct. bring some comparables. You know, when dealing with you, you understand the real estate side. Right. So you look at it the same way they do. But if they don't get lucky and have someone coming out that has your experience, mm -hmm. they could be in trouble where they're, they're fighting this appraisal contingency just to get $5,000 more in value. Yes. Unfortunately, it does happen a lot, but it all be, it's extremely important that all that work it's done at the beginning. So it's, you could sell the property at market value. There's no reason to overprice a property because you still, if it's going to be for lending purposes, you are going to have an appraiser who's going to come out and establish a market value for that property because the bank, may, it's going to lend based on that collateral. So there's no need to waste time let's just do the homework right from the beginning if you're not sure what you're looking for what if it's, it's, if it's a unique property just give me a call and i'll be able to tell you exactly which way to go and how we could come up with the value and you want to keep it simple if you're a listing agent you know when, when i always tell listing agents if you're getting this property under contract wouldn't it make sense to bring in an appraiser to come in and do let's say a bpo or to to kind of tell the seller hey i'm an expert in appraising and here is what my appraisal comes in i think you should list it for this it could probably sell somewhere around this it's i think it's a little bit more important you know if i was listing property i would love to present that to my seller so they know wow you're giving me an honest opinion which is the same reason we tell people let us come in and pull title work ahead of time if the seller gets to choose us for closing so we can see if there's any issues we can present to the seller hey we did all the homework and you're clear, you're good to go. There's a very important aspect that you just touched on. One of the, one of the many things also that it's listed in the appraisal, it's market exposure. That means the market exposure includes how long the properties are on the market in that specific neighborhood. And in my case, I also include what is the typical discount, the list price to sales price ratio. So you could have an idea how much to list it for so you could get that discount. Let's say if a, if a neighborhood is typically 97% list, um, list price, list price to sales price ratio, then you list it 3% above your desired price. 
So and it's they, a little bit more than just checking out Zillow and yes, looking just, at the last closed sale in the neighborhood. It's, there's a little bit more that goes into getting definitely, these Definitely. I mean, this is uh, a lot of analysis. It's it's a 30-page report typically when with your pages, with your photos. I mean, maps, all the data, market analysis, sales, all kinds of different things. You really gives you a complete, complete picture of the subject property and the neighborhood. All right, well, thank you. You educated us. You know, I know I learned a lot. I know they learned thank a you. lot because it's, it's definitely, you need to understand the differences of, of what we see in the industry, the difference between a assessed value and appraised value. Maybe Fannie Mae guidelines and what a BPO is and how important it is to have someone on your team. Right. So hopefully our viewers will select you to be on their team. Uh, you've helped us, you've educated us. How can they help you if, if there's your services? I mean, can, what can you offer to the, the realtors, the investors here? I know the lenders hopefully will get mm -hmm. you added to their list. We could definitely, I mean, just for being a preferred vendor with Kevin here in Independence Title, I would be more than happy to extend um, my services to you. If you need to know market value, marketability of a property, or just know market conditions, I'll be more than happy to assist you with that. All right. It's all about taking your business to the next level. You know, we yes. want to make sure that, that they're going in smart and they're working smarter rather than harder. Right. Having the right people, just like the title company, mm -hmm. just like the lender, having the right team is going to help them make more money and, and, and get some good results. And save them time, make more money, right? Awesome. <laughs> time is money. Thank so, you so much. So thank you all for watching. As always, my name is Kevin Thatcher, the owner of Independence Title. Subscribe below to make sure you get alerts. If you don't subscribe, you won't know when our alerts come out for our next show. So please hit the subscribe button below. Leave us a nice comment, maybe a different type of show you'd like to see. We're always taking recommendations of different topics that we can bring more value to you. Thank you very much for watching and we look forward to seeing you at the closing table.